be real, Lord Shen, the pure evil peacock who committed the near genocide of pandas in Kung Fu Panda 2, is a relatable character. Yes, committing genocide against cute pandas isn't cool at all, and the idea of relating to this genocidal maniac and monster is horrifying, but genuinely at his core, Gary Oldman's Lord Shen is soaked in relatability. Being someone who is a control freak and just completely blames everyone else but himself. First, this messed up peacock obsesses over control to a point where he obsesses over controlling his own fate, leading to the near genocide of cute pandas. And he did this because he saw a prophecy proclaiming that if he kept doing his devious shit, he'd be stopped by a warrior in black and white, which is insane because there's so many animals that are black and white. There's penguins, zebras, and those stinky ass skunks and orcas. But Chen settled with the most unthreatening black and white animal. Just a big fat panda. Which Chen must have been the first guy to find pandas so threatening that he committed genocide just cuz. Which obviously committing genocide is naughty naughty, but Lord Shen's real problem is focusing on controlling the uncontrollable future, while not controlling what actually dictates his future, which is his present, which I believe that we're all like that. Obviously not to this extent where we commit genocide, but we're constantly worried about what tomorrow brings instead of the present. So much that we are so fixated on making our next moment perfect, even though it doesn't make sense in the imperfect chaotic world we all live in. Tomorrow is a mystery that we all are trying to solve and fulfill, even though it isn't meant to be solved, it's meant to be experienced. Which in Shen's case, the main reason for his dreadful fate was his commitment to being a Hall of Fame menace to society. Hell, the first thing we see a young Shen do is twist a beautiful firework, which the peacocks created for celebration and joy, into a weapon of devious shit. This peacock was evil off the jump, possibly the first and only evil peacock I've seen yet. Next, Lord Shen could have changed his fate if he changed his power-hungry heart, but he never did. Instead, he always desired changing the external, wanting everyone in China to bow down before him. He even changed bits of himself, replacing his own elegant feathers and feet with metal weapons, showing that he doesn't really accept the bits that made him a peacock, because he believed that he never truly belonged in the first place because his parents understandably banished him. In the same vein, Lord Shen blamed every piece of his misfortune on everyone else. He even blamed his own loving parents, who provided everything for him, giving him an empire, riches, and love. Yet, he still blamed them for his own unloving nature, constantly blaming them for the constant, ever-growing void in his soul, even though he knows that they aren't the ones to blame. It's horrifying how relatable this is, especially to me. It's so much easier to blame everyone else, even though I know that I'm the one to blame for my own unhappiness. Because the idea of losing that self-pitying crutch hurts more than taking accountability. Shen knew this for a moment, even contemplating every devious action he's committed. But Shen knew he's been a piece of shit for far too long. He can't go back now. The dead exist in the past, and I must attend to the future. By the way, Gary Oldman delivered this expertly, coming off as pretentious yet tragic. Honestly, this makes Shen and Poe's dynamic spectacular, being two sides of the same coin. Our dearly beloved dragon warrior, Poe, is all about unapologetically living in the present, believing the present dictates the future, while Shen is the complete opposite being all about the future dictating the present. Same with how Poe accepts his flaws that he can only blame himself for, but in return, he betters himself in the process. While Shen doesn't accept his flaws and sins, blaming everyone else but himself for the piece of shit he is, and in return, he falls apart, with life literally crashing down on him. With all of this, it's obvious that we should strive to be Poe. But life isn't that simple. Obviously, it's cool to live in the present, but we do got to keep our future in mind as well. Not only for ourselves, but for others. It's really all about balance, which the yin yang pretty much represents. But yeah, don't blame everything in your life on others. That's just not cool. So yeah, let's be real here. Lord Shen is one evil motherfucking peacock, literally having everything in the world, yet desiring more. It honestly reminds me of this other masterful DreamWorks menace. But that's for another video. Anyways, Lord Shen from Kung Fu Panda 2 is relatable because he has mommy and daddy issues.
So yeah, in all seriousness, I really love Lord Shen, though. Like, he's a despicable character, but he's such an interesting character to analyze. And it really makes Kung Fu Panda 2 the best in its trilogy, and he is the best villain in this trilogy. And one of the best villains in animation.